From the Coach's Desk, I'm John Daly, and we're discussing leadership challenges and opportunities. Today, we're going to talk about how important it is for leaders to stay calm during incredibly stressful situations. One of the takeaways from this past pandemic has been watching governors and mayors and even some doctors and nurses get on TV and literally panic that they didn't have enough ventilators, they didn't have enough beds, they didn't have enough staff, they didn't have enough medicine. Literally panic. It was like they were screaming, the sky's going to fall, we're all going to die. The problem with that is ever, how many people panicked became so fearful from those governors, mayors, doctors, and nurses. Now, the president, and, and full disclosure, I'm a supporter of President Trump, he didn't panic at all. Matter of fact, he set out to get all those things. Not only did he get them all, but some of those governors and mayors didn't even use the resources he provided. He stayed calm. He put together an amazing team. And he got the job done. No one went without a ventilator. Beds went unused. Hospital ships put in place that were never used. But he got the job done. And he stayed calm. And he tried to keep the country calm. Unfortunately, at the same time he was trying to keep the country calm, the governors, mayors, doctors, and some nurses were trying to freak the people out. And they did. Look at the panic. We lost how much productivity, how many people died because of the panic. In 30 years that I've been working in critical care medicine, I learned that the best doctors and nurses stayed totally calm when all hell was breaking loose. I remember being in surgery and we had a bleeder in the hip incredibly difficult place to get to a vessel and, and seal it off. And I started to panic. I was young. It was, it was one of my first surgeries. And the doctor said, John, get up here, stand on the stool and show me what to do. I, I had been through school. I knew how to use my product to seal off that vessel, stop the bleeding. But I freaked out that one time. And the doctor straightened me out really quick, said, you're here to solve this problem. Get up here and help me do it. From that day on, for literally probably 20, 25 years, my wife said I had ice water in my boots. I didn't. No. I knew how to control my emotions. I used to take new sales reps into an OR or into an ICU into a patient's bedroom where one of our monitors were being used. But I'd walk up to the monitor and look at it, and the patient would look at me, and I didn't say anything, and the heart rate started going up. And I looked at the patient, and I said, I'm sorry, I'm John Daly, I'm from Arquette Electronics, and I'm here checking on your monitor. You are fine, I'm just looking at the monitor. And then the heart rate would start to drop. I'd take the sales rep out in the hall, and I'd say, did you learn from that lesson? Did you get that everything you do, people are watching, doctors, nurses, patients, biomed staff, they're all watching you. And if you freak out, they're going to make assumptions on why you're freaking out. And it may have nothing to do with what they think. You have to stay totally calm. And as I did turnarounds in businesses, um, especially turnarounds in businesses, some of them were in deep trouble. Serious trouble. But my team and I went in there, stayed totally calm, interviewed all the people, got them all convinced that we were going to be okay, the company was going to recover, and we were going to turn it around. And then they helped us do it. People say, how did you get the, the turnarounds done so fast, John? Because I enlisted the employees that were already there, the managers that were already there. I, I got them on our side. I got them inspired and focused on the cover. And they figured out how to do it. 
unbelievable evil. So I hope the one thing you get from today is if you're going to be a successful leader, you have to stay totally focused on solutions and on opportunities, not failures, not challenges. The only time you fail is when you don't try, when you give up. That's when you fail. But if, if you get a challenge and you go, oh, great, I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to figure out how to do it. I'm going to get a team inspired to figure out how to do it. That's where you start to grow as a person. That's where teams do amazing things. My team at Sigma Aldridge built a college of sales and science. We used it in 58 countries. It was both based online and in-person workshops. It had its own score, uh, like a like a report card, but more sophisticated than that. We built that whole thing with, I think, 140 courses. I'm getting older. I don't remember as well, but I think it was around that many. And, and my team did that. And, and people said, how did you do that in a year, year and a half? And I just smiled. And I said, I didn't, number one, my team did. And because we all knew how to play off each other's strengths and weaknesses, we knew how to help each other. We did amazing things, things that we didn't even think would happen. So hopefully for you folks out there that want to be a leader, you have to be clear that when all hell is breaking loose, you stay calm. One of my favorite sayings, if you're into meditation, and, and it's really been helpful for me, I'm not the body, I'm not the mind, I'm not the emotions, I'm the spirit. Well, if that's true, then I don't let my emotions control me. I control my emotions, I control my body, I control my mind, me, the spirit. So if you, if you look at it that way, it's really clear that you need to take control of your emotions. For me, meditation is a huge success, and I put a another blog out on that that you can look at ideas on how to do it. Um, but it, you'll, you'll learn how to control your emotions and it just takes practice. When I coach CEOs and senior executives, that's one of the things we focus on. So I hope you enjoyed the video behind me. It's the ocean and I'm here in the villages, as I said, I would be, but today I'm going over to Tampa, Clearwater, to the beach to see my brother and his family. And so I thought I'd share with you the beach. Um, I, I love it here. I'm not a spokesman for the villages, but I am very proud to live here. I'm looking forward to the next blog. I hope you have a wonderful week.